Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today I want to have another quick chat about Land Rovers and what on earth is going on with them because prices are all over the place, obviously insurance a nightmare, people are stealing them left, right and centre. Dealerships are flooding out and they're not taking responsibility and trying to pass it on to the owners. There's even strike action going on at some of their plants. So I thought we'd have a look at a few different articles, talk about it and figure out what on earth is going to happen with Land Rover going forward. First article I was going to look at was this one here from Car Dealer Magazine and it's titled Insurance Panic Causes Prices of Used Jaguar Land Rover Models to Tumble. Figures show eight of the top 25 biggest falling prices in the last six months are Jaguar Land Rover models. Used car dealer says panic surrounding the saga is causing prices to plummet. Well, we've seen that. Um, we've seen that in some of the auction videos I've done. I'll put a link to a few around here, or Toby will. And it does seem like prestige cars are going through the floor with their prices at the moment. But then again, we'll get to another article in a minute that, you know, it's not all quite as straightforward as you think. Are trade prices and retail prices dropping at the same rate? A lot of you have said in the comments that they're not. Used car trade valuation experts, Cap HPI, reveal that out of the top 25 largest falling used car models in the past six months, eight of them were Jaguar Land Rover models, seven were Land Rover models. The Range Rover Evoque has been the biggest faller, losing nearly a third of its price, 30.4% during the period. A number of newer models from the car manufacturer have also been seriously impacted, with the latest Range Rover Sport in petrol, hybrid and diesel variants losing up to 28.3%. So Car Dealer Magazine uh, had in Phil Johnston, boss of used car dealership Spencer Flint Automotive, to do an interview. Uh, further down here, he's saying, the reliability issues are certainly not a myth. Range Rovers have slight issues selling at the moment, but probably 50-60% of the cars he sold in the last three months have still been Range Rovers. That means I know what they're worth and whether it's sensible to buy or not, but yes, insurance premiums have gone up. In London, insurance premiums have gone up crazily. They've spiraled or you just can't get insurance whatsoever based on the video that I did where I tried to do a quote, that's here. But it's important the motor trade doesn't panic and reduce those cars because outside the big smoke, it's not had that much of an effect. Now I have to agree, I think while prices are coming down, people are finding it harder to insure them and it's generally putting people off of them to a degree. There is still a massive market out there for them. Range Rover's got to be one of the top brands that people want. As you've said in the comments before in previous videos, the retail prices don't seem to be dropping. And that is the case with all cars at the moment. Although trade prices are dropping, that demand perhaps to get stock in is a sign of things that will happen with the retail side, but the retail side is still quite strong. And while we're talking about used cars and used car values, I just want to take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Vehicle Score. Vehicle Score is the free car checker. It will give you a score on your car from zero to 999, depending on how good it rates that car from its MOT history, age, mileage, and many more factors. I need a registration. I can't think of any. So what I'm going to do is put in my Jeep off-roader, which is probably going to score horrendously bad but that's irrelevant as far as this check goes. It actually scores 489 out of 999, which is pretty average. More importantly, I just want to show you the features of what you get. So we can go down to our score insights. It will give us some points on why it's looking good, points on why it's looking bad. Mainly on this one, it's saying it's age, mileage, and some MOT comments. You get your vehicle details section right here. So if you want to check whether a car's taxed or MOT, you can see that here. It's highlighted in green with how many days are left. If it's not, it will be in red. You can check the car's entire MOT history and all the results that from those MOTs, as well as looking at the mileage tracker. So you make sure that the mileage is always going up or at least staying the same, never dipping down, showing that it might have been clocked. They've usually got loads of information about things to check if you're looking at buying a car, as well as a future value estimator as well. But most importantly, if you are going to hand over your hard-earned cash, you want to be doing a background check on that car, make sure there isn't any hidden history and vehicle score can cover that for you. So their cheapest check is £2.97, the Salvage Plus report. The ultimate report is £8.97, and the ultimate report, which is insured, is just £9.97, gives you complete peace of mind, and also gives you £10,000 worth of Experian data guarantee. So should something arise with that car that wasn't on the report, you have some comeback to keep yourself covered and give you some peace of mind. And if you are going to use one of these checks, make sure you use my code, Shifting Metal. 20. 
That is gonna give you 20% off. That's an exclusive discount. No one else has 20% off. It makes it just £7.98, giving you £1.99 off. It is the cheapest way to do it. No other code gives you this much. So make sure you use the code. You can find the link in the description as well. Obviously, we can go back to an article that we looked at before where Jaguar Land Rover is spending 10 million quid trying to make their Range Rovers safer because they have got a system on them with a keyless entry where you can quite easily replicate or extend the signal, fire up the car and drive away. I'll try and add a clip here of how quickly someone can get a signal from a car, fire it up and drive away and get away with it. So that's what's really affected the insurance values therefore making it harder to have, and it's a bit of a nightmare. Of course, you can turn off the keyless thing, which would keep your car safe, but I guess most people don't want to. They want this premium car, they want this effortless way of getting in, and uh, a lot of cars are still getting stolen that way. You'd hope that with the improvements being made on that side, that should help kind of bring the insurance premiums down in the future, and perhaps the values and demand should start going up again. And on top of that, one of the things that kept the prices quite high was the supply of the newer cars, especially the Jaguar Land Rover products, while we had this pandemic going on and there was a shortage of chips, etc. I found another article from Birmingham Live about indefinite strike action spells trouble for JLR and BMW. It says walkouts begin on October 12th as workers at International Automotive Components, IAC in Solihull, are unhappy about pay. Well, that going on isn't gonna help with their supply, manufacture, etc. Uh, I don't actually know what the outcome with that is. I couldn't find any kind of follow-up article on what's happening there. It certainly doesn't spell plain sailing for Jaguar Land Rover at the moment. Likewise, while we had all the floods recently, one Jaguar Land Rover dealership was left completely underwater, loads of cars being written off, everything on site was flooded out. Uh, it was an in-shape dealership in Derby, flooded out, and they've turned around and said to the customers, you're going to need a claim on your insurance, which obviously isn't doing much for PR as far as Jaguar Land Rover is concerned. I wouldn't be very happy if I'd left my car in a dealership while it was having some work. It flooded and they turned around and said to me, it's now your responsibility to claim on your insurance to do that rather than our responsibility. That can't be helping them whatsoever. I think there are an awful lot of customers in that scenario that are, are pursuing legal action against InShape. Is it InShape or InShape? I don't know. Probably sounding the same. So it just seems wherever you look for it, if you search Land Rovers at the moment, then you know it's some kind of turmoil going on. It just doesn't seem good. It doesn't seem good for values. That said, we were at auction recently at uh, G3 in Yorkshire, and I was interested in bidding on a Vogue, and I kind of bottled it, I guess, because of this whole kind of worry about, is there demand there? Are the prices still there? Will I be stuck with it because people can't insure it? And Frankly, I bottled it when I could have got an absolute bargain with a huge margin in it because the retail price was still about 10,000. I think it sold for something like five and a half thousand. So with fees, let's say I got that for 6,000, I'd have had a 4,000 pound profit margin in that, which would have been absolutely incredible. And funnily enough, Car Dealer Magazine's got its hands on the data from Dealer Auction, who run dealer auctions, you can sell between dealers, transfer cars, and they run what they call a retail margin monitor. Their other dealers will tell them how much money they're making on cars. And the article says that the November dealer auction retail margin monitor reveals car dealers are currently making an average of £5,100 on Evokes. That tops their list here. Number one, Land Rover, Range Rover Evoke, £5,100 and in brackets it says 41 days, so that's 41 days to turn or how long you'd have it in stock. So from buying it to selling it, how long that is, 41 days is pretty good. Most people would be quite happy with 30 days. 90 days is usually like people like to cut it off and think about getting rid of that car because it's clearly not gonna sell. Looking down the list, the next one's Mercedes-Benz A-Class, 3,425 pounds with a 36 days to turn. Uh, I've never made that sort of money on an A-Class. I don't know who does that. I always seem to be stuck with A-Classes for some reason, but obviously some people are. Number three is the Hyundai Tucson. Number four, the Volvo XC60. Then it's the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, Ford Cougar, BMW 3 Series, Mini Countryman, BMW 1 Series. Again, never do well with those. Peugeot 3008 uh, with 2,800 pounds with 38 days to turn. Interesting to see what people are selling. And while there's only one Land Rover in that top 10 there, it says Land Rover was the most profitable brand, returning dealers an average 
of 4,450 across its models. The dealer auction CEO says, Land Rover products, despite coming under scrutiny of late, continue to shine when it comes to margin potential. Well, yeah, as I say, if trade prices are dropping, you can get stuff, people are a bit wary about buying it, but you know you've got a market for it, and it's a strong market, people still want them, so long as it's an area outside of London or Manchester where they're not gonna be impossible to insure, then there are really good margins in it. So fortune favors the bold, I guess, if you're willing to take a risk. As always, if you're willing to take a risk, you can probably earn some money, but it could be risky as well. In fact, that's exactly what this article goes on to say. The data comes amidst a used car price drop that's seen the average values of cars fall 8.4% in the last two months in the trade. Used car prices are now down nearly 18% since April. However, retail prices have not dropped quite as quickly. Auto Trader said the price of used car advertised on its platform were down 2.5% in November, following a 0.2% drop in October and a 1.2% drop in September. So while prices are still coming down, a bit more like normal, I don't understand really why people are panicking quite so much in the dealer world because this is just how it would be normally before uh, incredible rise like we saw through COVID-19. They're not coming down quite as much as the trade prices are. And one thing we've noticed, uh, what with carsboughtformore.com and our general buying of cars, is that if you look at the cap prices, they are just completely isolated from auto trader retail valuations. Probably the two main kind of valuation guides that people tend to use in the UK and they are worlds apart. So in some ways it's working in dealer's favor because you can say, look, there's the cap retail price. It's only 8,000 pounds. Whereas actually where people are buying the car from on Auto Trader, it might have a retail of 11,000 pounds because no one's buying a car from cap HPI, are they? Interestingly, we can have a look and see what the top 10 used profit margins by brand were. So number one, as we know, was Land Rover. Number two was Mercedes-Benz. Number three was BMW. Number four was Volvo. Five Audi, six Mini seven Volkswagen, eight Nissan, nine Kia, and 10 Renault. Obviously that's an average, it's based on anything that's used, so it could be from 20 years old to six months old, it's used. So don't make any mistake, if you're selling a, you know, a 15 year old Land Rover, you're probably not making four and a half grand margin on it. But it gives you an idea, there's still an absolutely huge demand for Land Rover products. And in fact, with the fact that the prices are coming down lower, they're bringing it into the reach of even more people, so the demand comes stronger again, more people can buy those cars when perhaps they couldn't before, and maybe it's gonna start pushing it back up. I really don't know. I had, did say in my previous video that perhaps a Land Rover could be a good investment if you can insure it, if it's something that you really want and you know it's within your budget that would be sensible for you anyway. I do think that come into the new year, that might be the one sort of brand that will hold its own value-wise, or at least go up once they start investing this 10 million pounds in making them safer, once insurance companies pick up on that and insurance values come down again, and once dealers realize that actually there is still a strong demand there and the trade prices start coming back up again. This isn't financial advice, don't take it from me. Make your own decision, but I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of talk through all of the ins and outs about what's happening with Jaguar Land Rover because it is a bit of an interesting time at the moment. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you can follow me there. Don't forget to check out my website, shiftingmetal.co.uk, where you can find all of my merchandise, as well as my discount codes, including vehicle score. And if you're looking to sell your car, then please do visit my website, carsboughtformore.com. Enter your information, we'll give you an instant valuation. If you wanna go ahead, we can collect the car from you, pay you the same day, and try and make it as hassle-free as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.